They say, hey, we got one more thing. Fades to black, fades in. It's an ocean shot. It's like, a lot like the trailer for Frozen 2. Where it's like, all right, cool, ocean, got it. I'm into it. It's moody. Anime. I know immediately, like, okay, the art style's interesting. I'm intrigued. A lot of shots of the ocean, a lot of shots of the ocean, shot of a ship with an art style. At that point, genuine goosebumps on my <laughs> MFing skin. Link's Awakening, getting remade for the Switch. What's better than this? It's incredible. That art... Just in that opening where it's like, oh my god, like unique art style for Zelda, that's great. Then they show gameplay, and it's an art style that we've never really seen from Nintendo. Correct me if I'm wrong, but it's kind of chibi, but better looking than chibi. It is a weird fusion. It looks like some weird fusion of like diorama and like old sort of like wooden dolls or something. It's it's really weird, like the way his 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 eyes specifically look like Mickey Mouse, like his his older right his, his classic eyes or whatever. And it would have been so easy for them. I assume this is the 3DS team. I don't know for sure. Uh, Imran, let me know if you know anything. But then also... Yeah, I believe it's the Link Between Worlds team. Okay, gotcha. Yeah, it would have been relatively easy for them just to take the Link Between Worlds art style since that game is so connected to Link's Awakening Mm -hmm. to begin with uh, and just to kind of make a better looking version of that. But I love that they shook things up so much. Like that art style and the presentation overall, just the idea that it's coming on Switch, I love that they have kept that oddball game as an oddball. <laughs> like a game that should not exist to begin with mm-hmm. is now coming out on Switch completely out of the blue and it looks unlike anything we expected. Yeah. It's just so beautiful. I'm curious to see what they do with it because it from the trailer it definitely looked like here's all the encounters you remember, here's all the parts of Link's Awakening that you remember, sort yeah. of like a spiral-esque, like we just sort of reskin this entire thing and it looks gorgeous. Right. I'm wondering if they do anything to like the gameplay or if there's new dungeons, things like that. But like it, it, on, on its surface, like I'm excited to play this again. Yeah, they'll probably have the DX dungeons in there, yeah. I'm sure, just for the, the weird color dungeons, which mm-hmm. maybe those will be jarring. Of like, why do they care so much about the <laughs> color in this one dungeon? Why is it I mean, that like game was built color? around two buttons, so I'm kind of curious, like, do they change that up? Is it going to be like you will have access to everything at once oh, that'd be amazing because the biggest pain in the ass going back to that game is inventory management and just swapping yeah. out your items over and over again yeah. so if they could kind of streamline that a fair amount maybe smooth out some parts of the overworld make it a little bit more yeah, open may- maybe it's kind make of... it a little bit easier to like keep track of different quests a little bit okay because i know that game had like some side quests where you had to talk to specific people uh, in a specific order and so like some of that stuff maybe like nowadays might not play as well so right, i think maybe right. they might you know make it easier to keep track of that And actually, now that I think about it, yeah, make the story less interesting. Yeah. Um, they should throw Zelda and Ganon in there. Yeah, I think it would make it better. Make it fit into the chronology. It's not a dream anymore. Right. Put yeah. the uh, Ocarina of Time soundtrack in there instead. Yeah, instead of like Mario being in there, just replace it with a Fire Emblem character. Right. right? Is yeah. it too much to ask, yeah. Nintendo? It was amazing, though. And this is my favorite recurring theme in the game industry in particular. Maybe it's in other industries where we just don't look that much, but watching Twitter... Right when that was announced, it was like, oh my God, oh my God, second coming of Christ, second coming of Christ. I wish it was a minish cap. Like, people immediately are already complaining about this miraculous remake that Nintendo's making because there's just so hmm. many other options. Like, I'm, yeah, it's great. But... I'm surprised they went to minish cap of all games because, like, <laughs> I feel like I, people love Link's Awakening and, like, I can see the heritage from it, but I, I still have, like, a softer spot in my, in my heart for the Oracle games because those, oh, really? those are the games I played the most. Yeah. Uh, so, I like, I would have preferred a, an Oracle thing. So, obviously, oh they're going to, they're obviously going to make Link's Awakening because that was, like, the first one of those games. Right. So, I, I, I'm not, like, disappointed. I, I'm just saying personally, but like, I, I'm glad they're doing this because then it open. If this does really well, maybe they'll remake the Oracle games. So, but yeah. I, I, I'm I'm super excited for this. I want to play it. I am so excited. I just played that game. Well, like it. I have nostalgia, like Zelda nostalgia, only for Link's Awakening. It's the only one I played as a kid. But I didn't finish it until 2012. And we made this video, which is fun to look back at, where it's like uh, Jeff Cork old Dan Reichert, myself, in Game Informer Studio before it was built out, just talking about Link's Awakening. Um, and it's fun to go back and just think about that era. I was so excited the second that I beat it to just talk about it because it is such a bizarre game, and I love the development story so much. Mm -hmm. And I know that Kyle posted uh, an interview with uh, the game's director at a certain point, Azuka, talking about just how it was made in the after hours at Nintendo, and the overall philosophy was like, yeah, we kind of felt like it was a parody of Zelda at the same time because it started out as a Link to the Past remake that then just became more and more bizarre. Hmm. Uh, and that's why there are so many weird things like Kirby's in that game, Mario's in that game, there's the Yoshi doll. Yeah, yeah. It's Zelda and Ganon aren't in there. It's just such a bizarre little game. And it's so awesome that now in 2019, of course, we all get to rant and rave about playing Link's Awakening again. Right. 
What would be a deal breaker for you that if not in that game? Like it's in the original, but not in the remake. Oh, if they took it out? Yeah. Mm, I think, mm, I wonder how much, like with the localization, because I liked how bizarre it is, like talking to the little kids in the first town you go to, and they're like, I think one of them has a line, which is, you know, hold down or press the start button to check your menu. I don't know why I'm saying that. Like just those types of like weird anomalies where it's like, what? Wow, just like breaking the fourth wall in the Zelda game. Mm-hmm. Uh, I would, I would be bummed out if they smooth things out and made things less weird in the dialogue. Cause there's some magic to just big blocky game boy text and how cryptic it can be. And I know that uh, Tezuka even referenced that a lot of, the tone of that game was inspired by Twin Peaks, which apparently yes. Nintendo was watching at the time. Yeah. So I mean, this will be inspired by Twin Peaks season three. <laughs> <laughs> It'll be way darker. Yeah, for sure. Just like a five minute shot of Link just standing in the field. Yeah, there's the first twenty hours is just Link not being like not knowing who he is and just kind of uh, wandering around. Kinda. The wind fish comes out, then it's just footage of an atomic bomb yeah. going off. Yeah, yeah exactly. Yeah. Oh, I'm excited to see their version of the wind fish with those graphics. Yeah, that dumbass gypsy whale. Nothing yeah. better. I think a lot of the bosses like. Uh, they're there was that one boss who was throwing the, the little spike thing around. Uh, like he looked really cool. Like I, I, I like I like the style that they're going for with this. And, yeah. And even if it's even if like gameplay wise, it kind of looks like hey, we just prettied up all these sort of very blocky sort of interface gameplay kind of thing. Yeah. Which I, I'm, I'm I'm a big fan of. Oh my god. If you can't right. ruin your reputation by stealing something, then I'm out. Oh, that's right. Of course. And you're called thief the rest of the game. Mm-hmm. God, that game is so. Weird and good. Mm -hmm. That was just a clip from a larger show called The Game Informer Show. You can find it on iTunes, Google Play, or GameInformer.com. We take the fun opportunities and exclusive information from Game Informer Magazine and boil it into a show that airs every Thursday with exclusive cover story information, developer interviews, a lot of fun stuff. So come love games with us. 